People who claim to want the nation state are actually trying to have a pan-national movement to institutionalize separatism and division within national borders all over the world. Somehow or another, we have to find a way to bring simple, personal decency and trust back to our politics. We're going to live in an us and them world or a world that we make together. So is it going to be one set of rules for us and another set for everybody else? Or are we going to find a way to live through the same rules? If you got that, in every age and time, eventually, the challenges we face can be resolved in a way that keeps us going forward instead of taking it to the edge of our own destruction. So the first thing you've got to give uh, <laughs> President Clinton is he's going after the movement that that created Donald Trump, that got him elected to the presidency. But the one thing I will give Bill Clinton is he warned Hillary's campaign uh, during the election that they needed to spend more time in swing states like North Carolina and Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and they continued yeah. to ignore him. So he, I would debate he knows more that he's talking about than she does. You know, I, I have a hard time when I hear President Clinton speak not thinking how frail he looks. I, I, you know, it almost like deafens me to the substance of his remarks. I look at him, he's three huh. years younger than I am, and I, I say, what, what, wh why is that? And I feel very bad, and I think that that had a, a very negative impact on Hillary's race, uh, the, the fact that they, they seem so frail when Donald Trump seems so ebullient and so physical and so passionate. In terms of the substance of his remarks, it was an event honoring Itzhak Rabin, who is my favorite politician, with all due respect to Governor Huntsman. I, I, I really, and, and Senator McCain, uh, I, I love Rabin, and Rabin famously said, uh, you know, the Jewish nation state, that Israel could be either Jewish or democratic. Uh, it, it, you know, uh, he was for, uh, obviously, with the Oslo Accords, a uh, two-state solution. And I, I really do lament the spread of nationalism uh, to the extent that uh, it has taken hold. I think there's going to be a rebound, but, though. But, I don't but think Geraldo, it's going to going back to the point, though, this is a former president. When the new president's barely in office... Uh, it, Did you really hear something against President Trump there? I didn't hear Underneath it, it all. I didn't yeah. actually call him by name. Yeah, I mean, but he you would know have, what? I the think. The Clintons have got to wake up in the morning still and think, what on earth? happened. I, I mean, love this it. This was their race to lose, right? <laughs> I mean, they had everything they needed to win this election. They had the money, they had the, the, the ground foundation, they had the polls all in their favor. I think they're still numb to the fact that they lost. I always go back to, there's a certain level of respect and statesmanship that a president should have when they leave office. Okay. They had their eight years to do what they wanted to do. Pass the torch on to the next person. But you didn't see this as a dig. Are we going to live in an us and them world or a world that we live in together? You don't think that was directed at I, President I, Trump? I don't. I don't. They're all I, they're think all when doing you think it. About it's you, collective yeah. as a family. Yeah. I, I agree with it's you. It's Hillary. I, I, it's Chelsea with her uh, upset voice you, she's found on Twitter. Well, they're not all of it. Cousins. But it's if all. We have a, but it's the collective Clinton unit when they all speak for each other and do everything together I believe that they they focus group everything and then put it out in the world and they are attacking President Trump over and over again I think we can all collectively agree the timing is very wrong on it if you're going to come out and criticize be very thoughtful in the way that you do it and wait a lot longer as Abby just pointed out they lost a historic election that will be studied well after all of us are long dead and gone you are historically known as the biggest loser who blew the biggest opportunity to a nationalist movement which by the way isn't just happening in America it's happening globally. But and it's I a think response he was speaking to more progressive, about But it's a, pro, a response to the progressive left. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it across the globe, all the people that you have seen now slowly well, leaving office. I think fairly he could be looking in the mirror and having several Democrats stand behind him, too. If he's talking about civility, remember, it was his wife who called the Republicans her great enemy. I mean, the, right. the lack of civility yeah. is not owned by one I, party I, or the other. I, it is nasty and it is shared. I, I think it all goes back to President Obama's failure to stop the Syrian civil war. Oh if, my we, if we had wow. stopped the Syrian civil war, if he had been aggressive there and not allowed Gaddafi and Libya to be deposed and destabilized the whole region, setting loose this huge tidal wave of refugees and immigrants, that's what destabilized Europe. That's what he's talking about because Europe now is responding in a way that says, oh, they, so you're they, talking they, about the red line. I think, I, I don't know if it's the red line. I, I, I think it, yeah, it, but the, the red line is already too late. I just don't know if they have a lot of, 
of if Bill Clinton, former President Clinton, has a lot of credibility to fall back on when talking about mm -hmm. people coming together because the big takeaway from the election, and Harris brought this up earlier, was the huge disconnect that the Clintons had yeah. with the American people. So I just don't know how much credibility he has to fall back on on that statement. All right. It seems